Guys, guess what? We got Patrick Adair in the house, by Hello, which I everyone. mean literally my house. I'm Patrick Adair. I make rings out of cool, interesting, and exotic materials. My company's called Patrick Adair Designs. I make videos here on YouTube. So we wanted to make a knife out of some exotic materials. Patrick being yes. the connoisseur that he is of exotic materials. What? Thought he'd be perfect to team up with. So show us some stuff. You you brought some cool stuff. Yes, we got and we're gonna make some cooler stuff goods. out of it. This is meteorite. This is Muaniana Lusta meteorite. Right now it looks kind of plain and dull, but don't be fooled. When we're done with the knife, we're going to etch it in acid, and it's got some amazing patterns that take millions of years to develop and are impossible to fake. It's an amazing material. We're gonna see if it can make a decent knife. As it is though, I, I tested a piece that I had, and we can test it again to see mm -hmm. if this is the same as what I had. Yeah. It was showing up on the Rockwell scale at 30, which, you know, a really good stainless steel or a high carbon knife, you could probably get it up to 60, maybe even 65 if okay. you're really trying to get a hard blade. 30 is, that sounds like it's a lot softer, but you also should keep in mind that like mild steel, the stuff you're gonna buy from Home Depot or whatever, mm -hmm. that's like a negative six. This knife is going to look spectacular. Function yes. is secondary. Secondary. A lot of the time. All right. Yes. And we've got some other cool stuff over here. They're just uh... Yes. So I do a lot of inlays in a lot of my rings. These are all the ingredients to create my Stardust ring inlay. We're not exactly sure what we're going to do for this uh, knife yet. Planning's still to come. I decided to bring all of these along with me. This is Aqua Glow Powder. It glows in the dark. This is crushed bellow opal. And it this looks stuff looks so amazing. cool up it's close. so vibrant. That's what gives it the overall stardust design is very monochrome gray muted. And so I wanted to give it kind of a spark of color. And that's gotcha. what this does perfectly. Awesome. And then Moonstone, um, it adds a really cool, it's like a mostly see-through stone. It gives it a really cool depth. Okay. And it also okay. has moon in the name. So, uh, you know, you know space. it's got that space vibe going on. And then this right here, meteorite shavings. Okay, same type of meteorite? Yes, so same exact type of, of meteorite. So we save all the shavings. It's such a precious material. So it's going oh, okay. to kind of dye the whole thing this charcoal color without having to use any pigments at all. And then right here, these are uncut natural diamonds. Ooh. These are some. These are some pretty good ones. So, we're gonna figure out what we wanna do here. Yeah, we need to figure out what shape and kind of knife we wanna do. We need to choose a knife shape. So I've got yes. a box of uh, knife shapes I've done before. Some of them I haven't even done before, but these are all options. Well, we don't have unlimited meteorite. So we're gonna have to pick something yes. that we can make work with what we've got. Yes. Now here's something to think about with meteorite. It's all very angular and edgy. So do we want to match it with a more of an angular, Something edgy... that complements that Yeah. Look. I like that. This is, that. this is pretty angular. The Tonto yeah. blade, that's certainly something. That's pretty cool. Got a few good options. Good. Let's whittle it down to these two. They have Let's wider see. blades, which again, I think is going to highlight the meaty right more. You're going to have more yeah. blade visible yep. to see what that's looking like. Yeah. And I think that's going to be a good thing. That's the design then. Should we do it? I like it. Cool. Before we cut this shape out, I want to do a test and make sure we actually can weld yeah, the meteorite. Okay. So, I've got a bar of 1095 knife steel here, which is, you know, carbon steel. It's probably about as close as we're going to get to this stuff without just going welding steel from Home Depot. Yeah. And so, this fits up nicely. I think we can just clean up both sides so they're ready to be welded and take this up to the welder and test how well that's going to bond. Great. How's that look? Well, we've got some tests to do, but so far, it looks welded. You know what I'm thinking? Meteorite hatchet. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I guess we're part of the way there. Maybe start with the <laughs> knife and move on to the hatchet later if it works well. All right. Let's go uh, grind this a little bit and see what kind of meetup our two metals made. Yes. I think it's connected. I think it's definitely connected enough at least. Yeah. And, and it could be a really, really good connection. I don't know, I'm not trying to stress test until yeah. it breaks, but it's holding. I think we can make a knife out of this and maybe don't try and chop any logs with this knife. Yes. But I think it works. Great. Maybe weld it to the meteorite. That is really good news. All right, so now we can start cutting the shape of the actual blade out of the piece of meteorite that we're going to use. All right. Before we weld things on, I think we're going to want to surface grind it and try and get the meteorite 
down oh, to about okay. the same thickness as our 1095. Yes. Okay. So at this point, yeah, let's grab the angle grinder and start wasting your meteorite. No way. Jeez, <laughs> this is this can be sad to watch, but worth it. All right, let's do it. Start off with just enough to kind of blanket the surface lightly. We'll add more if we need it. Go ahead and sprinkle it in and see how it's looking. I'm gonna go all over the place because this isn't necessarily mixed super well. It's hard to get these two dissimilar materials to mix, so we're gonna mix it. Time for the diamonds. Because we want diamonds at the bottom, we're putting these in now before we add any more resin. Now, the moonstone is extremely subtle, um, but it does, it does have a nice effect that it does add, so. All right, and as a finishing touch, some extra meteorite shavings. The reason for this is because the other ones that are mixed into here, they're kind of uh, covered in a lot of the other materials and the shine doesn't come through super well. So this will give it its chance to literally shine. This is easy to apply, just nice and easy all over the whole surface. All right, that should do it. There's a metallic sheen to it that it definitely did not have before. I like that. Love it. Okay, we wait for this to cure. Perfect. Awesome, so we, uh, we did that first layer where we put all of the cool stuff in there, made it look really nice, let the epoxy cure, and then yesterday I added another thin layer on top of that to give just a nice clear coat it looks great. You can see right down through the new layer of epoxy because it's just crystal clear stuff. And I am amazed at what that does to the opal. Ah, oh, there you go, box. Ooh. You've served your purpose. Technology these days. I'm just gonna get thumbprints all over it. Our resin's now been sanded down. It's a much better shape and we have a good sense of how thick it is, but I don't think it's fully Cured. I added a second layer on top of it just last night and it's really a 24 hour cure resin so it hasn't had that yet and we really want it to be as hard as it can get so we're gonna throw it in a low temperature toaster oven for an hour or so to really let that resin harden up all the way. All right so while the uh, the resin is in the toaster oven hardening we said we were gonna get ready and cut this and then we got distracted by making the handle for bits so now we're actually gonna get to cutting this. That cuts so much more easily than a stainless knife steel. Interesting. It looks so like you're doing a great fast, job. relatively. Made a lot of good progress with the angle grinder there. So normally, I would jump right to using the belt sander to try and take it down all the way to the rest of the profile. But this is thicker than we want the final knife to be. And I'm thinking that I should just put it on the surface grinder and grind it down to the thickness we want before I get all the contours and the rest of the profile shapes in. Okay, I gotta wonder how many knife makers have made this exact pun, making good progress, but we've barely scratched the surface. It's a burden knife being makers, this hilarious. Man. Locked in this room with you guys all day long. Surface grinding it has uh, brought out some interesting details in the metal. Any little crystals? Got or some inclusions, things? little crystals, but yes. we also have some cracking mm. in a few spots, and it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. The bevel I added to both the meteorite and the bar stock are so that when I weld it, the weld is going deeper into the metal. That way, when I grind the top off, I still have a lot of good connection and just more welding surface area in general. That's right, I can do top-down MIG welding. I've ground the weld down on one side and redrawn the profile of the knife. You can see I've left the weld on the other side still, just looking at the difference. It's a pretty good weld. I do have a couple little gaps in there, 
Um, we, since we have to now cut the profile of the handle out, um, I'm going to want to make sure I get edge weld. The process for cutting out the handle is the same thing that we were doing with the blade. Part of it we're going to use the angle grinder for, cut large bits out with that, and then we'll clean it up on the grinder. Got the general shape ground in, it's looking really good. Now I'm just in the process, I, I lost all of my lines because that's what happens from all the heat and putting in the water and stuff. I'm just retracing over everything to get the final grind in, but it is looking very good so far. I'm really happy with how it's turning out, and we may not have to do any more welding after all. Got a little notch. And I do have an attachment on the grinder that I could probably use to put that in, but I'm gonna see how it goes using a hand file. Now, I've never hand filed Meteorite before. All right, you uh, recommended we throw this in the toaster oven, and yes. this is so much better now. Yes, nice and uh... Rock no, hard, you can even hear it. It's no longer able to dig a thumbnail into it. So yeah. we've successfully cured it, and I think it's time we start cutting this out and gluing up the different pieces that we're gonna have yes. for this handle. So we're talking about, this is gonna be like the main body of the back of the handle. On the front part of the handle, we're just gonna have a little bolster area. We're gonna be using this blue micarta, and you're pointing out, that's gonna go really nicely with the, yeah. the blue prevalent color that that's we fantastic. have. fantastic. Excellent. You can see, you know, these borders really help you visualize how it's going to look finished. I've never done the grinding of a knife blade made of meteorite before, so it's the first time for everything. It's gonna be fun. Right now we want to do the etch, which involves putting the whole knife or all of the meteorite portion of the knife in acid. And we want to make sure that we've got a container that will hold all the acid and the knife, but isn't gonna, you know, we don't want a pot. We don't have that much acid. So we want something that fits the knife fairly well, but will allow it to be submerged. All right, it's etching time. This is the funnest, bestest part of the whole thing, in my opinion. We've got the knife ready to go. It looks beautiful, by the way. Thank you. And we've got it perfectly clean. Wiped it down with alcohol and set on a fresh nitrile glove. Now over here, our acid workstation, everything. This is denatured alcohol in a Taco Bell cup. We've got nitric acid over here, about 70% concentrate. Then a beaker to measure it out in. And then of course for safety, baking soda. Um, we've got the window open and some ventilation going, goggles on, gloves on. This is some scary stuff. Um, also there's the acronym always add acid. So we put the alcohol in first, we add the acid to that. That is how to do it safely. Nitric acid can pop and spark and smoke and get in your eyeballs. You don't want to mess with it. Now we've got this little container that is 25 milliliters and the ratio we're going for of denatured alcohol to nitric acid is nine to one, and 25 milliliters times nine is 0.99 cups. Yes. So one cup to one little nine beaker milliliters. is almost exactly we, perfect we for this ratio. Exactly perfect. I'll do my very best to get 0.99 cups. Yeah, don't here. don't fill it quite all the way. Back yes. it off one percent. We'll back that off. Now I don't trust that measuring cup to pour well, so we've got a large funnel so it no longer will matter. I suppose we could have just filled it 100% and counted on 1% evaporation. This is true. And you're 
saying, now we hope that as we add 50 milliliters of nitric acid, we don't get too much heat. Yes, yes, we want to do it nice and carefully and slowly. Now, before we get started on that, let's mix up some baking soda solution and clean down the work surface. All right, we're ready to go. Let's make some magic. Watch it happen. You can see it starting to react. Gives off a little bit of a like the shimmer. Yellow. In the water. You? Yeah, there's a like, shimmer like going on like, in there. It looks kind of like there's warmer water around yes. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there is. Like, yeah, it's yellow and brown kind of coming off of it. Let's look. Yep, that's good. Oh, we are getting Wow. Something. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. Wow. Oh, oh man, that's going to be like the coolest looking blade of all time. That has ever been made into a blade. Famously in the tomb of King Tut was found a knife with an iron blade. And after a chemical composition of it, they're fairly certain that that iron came from meteor. That and the fact that the Egyptians weren't doing iron working at that time. So a meteorite knife has been done before, but they didn't have nitric acid to bring out the effect, and I don't know if the meteor they were using even had this crystalline structure. Is this is Muaniana Lusta meteorite. Is this particular pattern kind of it's got, unique it's to got, that meteorite? In my opinion, the absolute best pattern of any meteorite. And so out there. there aren't universal, like every meteorite kind every of gets its own pattern. Every different. You can identify it even visually based on the pattern if you know what you're doing. All right. We've been etching the blade for, what, 10, 15 minutes, something yep, like that? Yep, about 15. And I believe it is done. Check this out. Wow. Ah. I can't believe how good that looks. Oh my word. It's so precisely made, yet so intricately and like organically shaped with yeah. those patterns. Yeah. Such an interesting look. I think the tanto shape really it goes it goes well. with it. Yeah, we've it's, got the angles. It's perfect. Wow. And I oh man, it's fascinating to see like the different solid like larger areas of patterns because we have like we have some darker lines, we have some lighter lines, and then we have some areas that have some horizontal lines that yeah. are very shimmery. Yes. Now we're just going to neutralize this using the ammonia. Yes. And the ammonia smells so good. It turns like blue green. Things you shouldn't do without the gloves. This. Now, after we've neutralized it, do we just rinse it in normal yep. running water? Tap water works. I've got the front shaped but I really want it to pop. I want it to look really good. So now I'm going to sand it, and I've got a pack of sandpaper that goes from 320 grit up to 12,000 grit. I'm gonna work my way through all of those on these front edges and bevels that I just put in, and then I'm gonna hit it on the polisher just to get it really nice and clean and shiny looking. Uh, I'm gonna end up doing that same thing for pretty much the entire handle after it's attached to the knife. Working our way up through that 12,000 grit sandpaper, we've got a very nice uniform finish here, and we're just gonna try and bring out a little bit of shine on the buffing wheels. Wash all the polish off, and we can take a close look at that. Now we're at this point, it's time to split the scales apart and actually glue them onto the knife. I wanna rough this surface up quite a bit to make sure that the glue is gonna do a really good job of sticking, uh, but then I'm just gonna mix up some five minute epoxy and attach it to the knife. After 
making sure we've gotten all the extra epoxy cleaned off where we don't want it to set. We just have to let this cure for a bit and then it's time to come start shaping the handle. The glue is cured, time to get on to shaping the rest of the handle. I am loving how this looks and we're getting pretty close, just got a little bit more to get us all the way through. So we're going to head back to the grinder after taping up the knife to protect the blade and shape that handle to how we want it. This profile is looking great. We're going to get shaped and then we're going to go back to smoothing it out, getting it nice and polished so you can really see all of the amazingly cool stuff we've got in the handle. We got the handle on and cleaned up and polished and it is looking so good. The home stretch. Patrick, look at this thing. The best, the best part. Thing. We gotta put an edge on this. We gotta make it sharp. As sharp as meteorite can get. Mm -hmm. Out of this world sharp. Ah! Which uh, ironically isn't that sharp. Uh, yeah. Well, no, it'll be sharp. It, it, it should be sharp. It just, just won't probably hold that yes. edge as well as a good nice yes. steel. You just gotta be careful. Use it sparingly, mm -hmm. and this knife will treat you right. The meteorite knife is complete. Look at that handle. Man, that is so cool. Come on. Oh, there we go. Okay. It's not okay. bad. This is so fun. Now again, it. this is not going to see a lot of heavy use. Yeah. Look at that. Okay, now this other side isn't as charged up. It just needs a second. Literally two, three seconds in direct sunlight. Boom. There it is. This is still a fairly bright room, so really not seeing the ultimate kind of room illuminating power of that glow powder. What I love about the glowstone material, just the natural look it has. All of the natural, real stones, items we put in this, leave you with a very, kind of like a granite. It does. It looks Look like green. to it. It's just glowing. That is the whole goal behind Glowstone, our trademarked stuff, is to just make an organic looking, amazing material that looks like it could totally be a natural occurring rock, but it just glows in the dark. This has been one heck of a cool project. Patrick, thank you so much for coming and uh, supplying the world's most amazing knife parts supplies well, well bits. it was my pleasure and i can't thank you enough for just this craftsmanship it is so beautiful glad you're happy with it, it i am awesome. i am thrilled with the final result of that well so great we well thank you very much i actually have a gift for you as well this is the stardust handle here's the stardust ring Ooh. Very cool. Now that's just kind of a sample ring. I've got one for you and one for okay. Keith, the All cameraman. Right. Well, thank you. Um, but we'll get your size figured out and we'll get you your own that's custom Stardust such a rings. cool look. And obviously it's it's this look. It's just yes. in a ring in shape a instead of a knife micro pattern, yes. Brilliant. Guys, if you are not aware, Patrick Adair makes the coolest rings probably in the entire world. Uh, Patrick, where should I be sending people to watch your stuff? Patrick Adair Designs right here on YouTube. There you go. Go check him out. Find the coolest rings ever. Go to his website. Look at the amazing rings. And uh, if one of them grabs your fancy, you should get it. Thanks for watching, guys. Guys, I absolutely love making videos like this. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Your support means the world to me. And of course, a special shout out. Thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon. If you're interested in joining Patreon to help support making more videos like this one, the link for that is down in the description. We'll see you next time.